after cesareans. Okay. And a couple of studies, several have been done that show that if you do a vaginal prep on a patient who has ruptured membranes or who is in labor, before she goes to C-section, the rates of endometritis are cut in half. So I have this flyer here, and it quotes one of the studies showing the rates of endometritis, and it also quotes the um, OR vaginal prep policy. It's actually the OR prep policy, but part of it is vaginal prep. And it has some step-by-step -step things, but let me show you what you'll find. These kits are stocked in the operating room, and when you open it up, you'll actually, the sterile gloves will be on top. So you wouldn't have touched any of those things, but you take the gloves out and up, put them on in a sterile fashion. And then um, this blue paper is for blotting. And then the white, presuming I have gloves on, the shiny side goes down and goes underneath the buttocks. And there's a way you can do that without contaminating yourself, which is like this. So it would go like this, only underneath. You're, you're imagining that I'm doing this in a sterile fashion. So now we uncover sponges, and we have two kinds. We have this kind, I don't know what it's called. And then we have sponge sticks. And you have two types of solution. And this one in pink is scrub. You're gonna use that one first. Uh, it has soap in it, and you use it on skin, but not on mucous membranes. And this one is called paint, and it's green, and you use this one on the mucous membranes. So you would start by opening this bottle and saturating these um, sponges that we've already looked at. Remember, I have these sterile gloves on, and I'm gonna start like this, and I'm gonna go to the top of the labia, back and forth, moving in an upward fashion, not going back over where I started. Now I'll discard this sponge, and I'll get a second one. And this one I'm gonna go back and forth from the groin outward across the thighs, and throw this one away. A third one I'll take and start at the groin on the left side, doesn't matter if you do left or right first, back and forth, and discard. Now I'm going to take the paint, the green one, and I'm going to saturate the sponge sticks. And I'm going to go into the vagina, and I'm going to be careful because remember this woman is still pregnant, so there's a fetal head here somewhere, and we're not going to go hard against resistance. We're just going to gently go in, and if able, we would go as far as the cul-de-sac. So that's the back of the vagina as far as we go gently, and then rotate the sponge while we remove it. And we repeat this process three times. One, this is two, rotating while I remove it. And then the third time, into the vagina as far as it goes without forcing, gently removing it. So we don't try to go into the cervix, we don't try to go up around the fetal head, we just go straight back as far as we can in a gentle way. And then we take one more, and this one also has the paint on it, not the scrub. And we start at the top of the labia and we go down all the way to the rectum in one scoop and then we don't go back and we're finished. So we will do this in the operating room, not in the LDR. Before we leave the LDR, we would um, remove any visible soiling, any stool, any blood, mucus, anything, just wash off uh, from the patient and then take her to the operating room after anesthesia has been placed. So let's say she ruptured her membranes and She's scheduled for day after tomorrow for a cesarean, but her water broke. So after the anesthesia and after the Foley is placed, now we'll do the vaginal prep. And then we do the abdominal prep after that. So that's the order of things. And we put her in the same position as we would if we were placing a Foley catheter with a little bit of a left tilt to get the baby off of the descending aorta and the inferior vena cava. Question. Yeah. So, 
even if they haven't labored, if they have come in with previous section ruptured, we still want to prep them even if they've not labored. Yes, this is for any patient who's going to the operating room who has ruptured membranes or who's laboring. Okay. So it's not going to be for the code C and it's not going to be for the scheduled cases during the daytime when the patient comes in and she's not in labor and not ruptured. Okay. It's for an urgent case, so it's that 30 minute time frame. And uh, I think somebody's working on the timing to see how long it, it takes exactly because we still need to meet the metric of a 30 minute from decision to incision. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you.